Let, let's bring uh, Mike into this now. Uh, when we talk about either minimum wage or a living wage, whichever one, uh, we have seen how states have been struggling with the 30,000 naira that uh, was set up as minimum wage in the, in, in the last uh, few years. Some states have not been able to meet up. Even at that, some states are still owing salaries of up to six months, one year, 17 months, 15 months, and counting. So when we're moving, talking about the next step, uh, the, the template that uh, the president-elect wants to bring on board, I wonder what you envisage when we talk about the capacity of states to also play along uh, for, for, for them to enjoy this. Because it's not only federal workers, we're also talking about people who work at the state level and also at the local government level. Um, very good question. It's not just about uh, the states. In fact, or the local government, I, I will also think about the private sector. Again, the minimum wage law is not just for the public sector. The minimum wage law is for the entire economy. So for the economy to be able to afford the, uh, the ability to pick up uh, an increased minimum wage, then that economy must expand. So it's, it's the, the, when you're talking about living wage, it's not just about uh, the federal government's capacity to pay more, or the state government's capacity to pay more, or the local government's capacity to pay more. It's also about the private sector's capacity to pay more, which is a factor of economic growth and economic condition of the country. Which brings me to the issue of, first, the federal government. The federal government's ability to pay more is directly indexed to the ability of the federal government to mobilize more revenue. And as my colleague in the studio already said, uh, let's even take out the waste. The direct wastes are easy to track. Uh, you buy an extra paper, you buy an extra air condition, you buy any locks every year. Those are very easy. At best, you'll be able to save half a trillion naira because the total capital expenditure of the federal budget today is about 5.6 trillion naira in a, in a budget of 20.75 or 20.73 trillion only 5.6 or thereabouts is devoted to capital expend, expenditure so let's say the waste is even 10 percent or 20 percent or even way more than that two trillion which is clear, clearly impossible two trillion of the 5.7 is wasted let's assume uh, we recover that, but you're still just improving your deficit by less than 20% because the total deficit in the budget is about 10.5. The question is, how do you be bridge 10.5 trillion of deficit that the federal government is facing today? First and foremost is waste by policy. The number one waste by policy is this subsidy issue. We are spending 5.5 trillion by way of under recovery. So if you look at the budget today, 1.75 trillion of that budget is devoted to, uh, is, is said to come in revenue, is said to come in from the oil revenue, which is not true. We should be making about six to seven trillion, but because we are doing under recovery through four subsidies, we're ending with 1.75. So automatically, you can see that Nigeria has an arithmetic problem. We do not have a revenue problem. If we stop doing oil subsidy, our revenue will jump from 10.75 to almost 15 to 16 trillion Naira, which means our deficit shrinks from 10 trillion to 3 trillion. That is just one part of the equation. The second part of the equation is the fact that we are currently converting, under converting the foreign currency that we're handing from oil and gas, we are con under converting it using the so-called official rate, while Nigerians live in the market and the reality that we are, our currency is actually trading at double the price. So the government is converting currency today at 420, 430, 440, but the reality is on the street, it's 740. So therefore, if I just take the component of the oil, oil and gas uh, uh, revenue in the budget today and I double it, it means that I'm looking at 2 to 3 trillion surplus, not deficit. So if we remove the subsidy, if we we'll correctly convert the, 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 and remove the double exchange rate, Nigeria, we have a 22 trillion naira revenue and a 20.7 trillion naira uh, 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 expenditure, suddenly yielding a surplus. So I'm telling you that even the budget as it stands today is, an is more of an arithmetic deficit, not a real deficit. No, Nigeria is not broke. Let's take that aside. Now let's explore the other sources of revenue of the federal government. We're talking about the reality of excise duties, import duties, and everything that are, should be better enforced. Let's talk about the reality of the federal government to be able to tackle mineral uh, resources as another source of revenue. If you grow the economy, the corporate income tax is also going to grow. The federal government has these three as the primary sources of its revenue. 
Now let's go to our state and local government. They even have more sources of revenue than the federal government. While the federal government is limited to uh, natural resources, capital, uh, corporate income taxes, and excise duties and import taxes, the state government can make money from property taxes, from personal income taxes, from the levies and development fees. They can make money from land use charges. The sources of revenue for our state government is largely unlimited, excluding the three sources of revenue for the federal government. So in an economy, where the state governments are able to uh, apply themselves to the resources that is available to them within their state, and the economy is also expanding, they will earn more revenue. Let's take also, let's also remember that by the federal government uh, 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 ensuring that the foreign revenue, the foreign exchange revenue, are properly converted, the state also gets expanded revenue because they earn 55 to uh, almost 50 to 55 percent of the federal allocation, uh, uh, allocations that come from this revenue, uh, from oil and gas, from mineral resources, and all of the mineral resources that the federal government gets, which invariably means that today states are being shortchanged by this double exchange rate that the central bank practices. So if we move towards a more unified exchange rate, most state governments will have double of the revenue that they are currently earning just from FAC. And then they will have an expanded economy, economic growth that will also allow them to be able to get more personal income taxes, development levy, property taxes, all of those things that they need to be able to have the capacity to be able to drive their state. This is also true at the local government level. An expanded economy also means that the private sector is more robust and is able to afford a minimum and a living wage. So I think if we focus on the bad policies, the bad policies are the reason why we are where we are today, is the reason why we are spotting a 50% deficit which is unprecedented, those bad policies are directly related to two things, subsidies and the double exchange rates regime. It does not make sense. Last but not the least, I also want to mention that also indexing our budget primarily to oil and gas makes no sense. Oil and gas is not the only resources Nigeria produce. It makes no sense why we should continue to index our, our budget year in, year out to oil and gas and to be determining our valuation of our currency to oil and gas. And I think the Bola Tinubu administration has already promised to look into that and to ensure that Nigeria correctly budgets and the budget reflects the reality of the Nigerian economy. All right. You both are on all fours on the issue of um, the, the big elephant in the room, uh, the removal of fuel subsidy. And you, are all, you both agree that Nigeria is in broke. Uh, but uh, back to the uh, Lagos studio now. If it has been said, if indeed it is the common sense solution to remove uh, fuel subsidy, and um, Ashwaji Tenubu has said he would do so, but you would both recall that you know, previous governments had said they would, even the exiting government had said he would, and then he pushed back the date for the removal. And of course, we all witnessed the, the strike and its impact, how everywhere was shut down due mm -hmm. to the removal before it was now uh, reversed. But w what needs to give to prevent, you know, we're still the same people, uh, so to speak, it's still the same set of Nigerians, mm -hmm. and what, what needs to give now to give acceptance to the fuel subsidy removal regime? Because uh, Tenobu has said he would make some um, difficult decisions, but these decisions need to be made. So if this includes um, the difficult situations, decisions that he needs to make, and he has said he would, what are you hoping to see now from we the people? Right, before we get there, Let's ask ourselves, what brought about subsidy payments mm. in the first place? I'm a farmer, I have a cassava farm, and I can convert my cassava to gari. For me to have a bar for my family, I need a stove, and I failed to get a stove. So if I have to give Mike a kilo of gari to give me a bar for my family, you know the consequences? One kilo of rice will come back, if not half a kilo, maybe one quarter of a kilo, and at a huge cost to me. I'm just giving it to you now in the barest sense of the failure of previous governments to have addressed the issue of refineries. We are the only country in the world that has consistently been wasting our resources on subsidy. Why? We fail to manage our refineries well. If they are old, aged, and technologies that they have there are outdated, Nothing stopped us from advancing and acquiring current technologies. I was physically present in China Mouse. We Bebari told the world that each year we build a refinery. The thinking then was 
oh, the four regional geographics that we have here, they will end up having two refineries. Even if we will not be exporting finished products, there will be enough for local consumption. Where is the refinery? None has been built to date.